a lot of people are going to be pretty pissed uh, during the course of watching this video. And I'm okay with that, but I want to ask you guys to stick around. I promise I can circle jerk you back into thinking that I'm correct here. Um, you guys have all seen the update. This is not going to be reading. You've seen a million videos of the update being broken down and this, that, and the other. This is not going to be that video. This is going to be talking about something that I don't want to talk about, uh, but is something that's very true and very unfortunate. I in the initial reaction to this post said it was amazing i said it was the best update ever and i stand by 95 percent of that um i think this change is awesome in terms of early and mid game players only in phase one now there's gonna be four phases the first two are gonna specifically help the earlier game players while phases three and four are supposed to help those end game players but increased uh, rewards from basically every game mode plus double drops on hard or double technically it's what uh, double drop rates. So instead of maybe you get it every 30, you get it every 60% of the time giving you more gear. But this is phase one. And the reason I specifically said this was an amazing change was because this was phase one. And they obviously understand that the money will be made in relics and it's totally fine. Just give us an opportunity to get from that early game to that mid game and then let us, you know, sift through people who want to spend money will progress in those relics quickly while those who don't like myself will kind of sit around. But what's really pissing people off and making people quit is the relic nines. Now relic nine is being distributed through territory wars. As you guys all know, this is not going to be a breakdown video, but as I've been more and more entrenched in the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes community, now remember, I've only been really, I've been playing the game for maybe two and a half years. I've been in the community for almost two years. You know, previously I was like a majority of the players, never watched a YouTube video, never watched a Twitch stream, didn't know who Arnold was, never heard of Capital Games. I just played the game. As I've gotten more familiar and more entrenched in the community, you start to talk to people, you build relationships, you learn things. It's all great. So I talk to a lot of a lot of content creators who are end game. A lot of them are very upset of, for other reasons and have kind of stepped away because of that. But a lot of end game players, and I'm in a fairly large guild, um, way too big for my own GP. But my guild is competitive. We will be competing for relic nines. I will have an opportunity that I do not deserve at 3.7 million GP to compete for some R nines. The problem is R nines are not distributed in a way that the very end game players are a huge fan of. I think, generally speaking, this kind of thing is probably a good move. I say that because Territory Wars is an old and important game mode. Most people don't pay much attention to it because it's not worth it. It's kind of like, you know, if Conquest right now sucked and you couldn't get Mauler Cat. No one would do it. That's kind of like what Territory Wars was, right? But now, just like Conquest, Territory Wars are very, very important. They are very, very, very important. Just like Conquest, you need those, you know, you used to get arrow magnifiers plus the, the meta characters. Now Conquest is giving, or sorry, now Territory Wars is giving you that Relic 9, which from the data mine seems to be ridiculously super helpful. Like, like someone... I can't remember, I was in the SCO event, someone was saying like 30,000 extra health on, you know, tank characters for R9. Like, it's ridiculous how good R9 is. So this is going to be very important for endgame players to be competitive, right? So what's the problem here? Um, people don't like Territory Wars, and now guilds are going to be completely destroyed because people are going to be stacking the most competitive, highest possible GP guilds, kind of like... It's kind of like murking when CPIT first came out. Now, I hear, and this is completely unsubstantiated, that, you know, CG is not a fan of murking. You know, murking, for those of you who don't know, is you get higher-end players, go to lower-end guilds. They basically carry you through raids. They get the high-end rewards, but players who don't necessarily deserve those rewards, and I don't mean deserve, honestly, I just mean from a gameplay standpoint, uh, lower-end characters can have access to Relic 8 or, you know, Treya shards back in the old days or whatnot. So, from what I hear, completely unreliable sources but whatever let's just pretend like it's true they don't like murking i feel like this is creating the ultimate murk culture i feel like guilds aren't really an establishment anymore you know how star wars galaxy heroes and i've said this for forever and ever and ever 
is kind of still alive because of that community aspect. Unlike almost any other game I've played, it's a very tight-knit community. Almost everyone knows everyone else, and the communities that you build are what keep the players in the game long-term, even if changes or characters or whatever they don't like happen to be in implemented into the game. So what I think Territory, or Territory Wars is doing now is it's creating an ultimate Merc culture. What do I mean by this? You know, let's say, like, my guild is 300, we could maybe squeeze out 320 million GP if we, uh, if, you know, some of our higher-end players didn't quit thanks to the conquest changes and stuff like that. So let's say we're, let's say we only, we only qualify for 300 million GP. Um, I, I think you guys can see my mouse here. Okay, well, I can't highlight it because it's an image, but, so if we win a territory war, which happens, what, like, once every two weeks, something like that, we get one Relic Knight map, which is fine. I mean, this is the end game stuff, and I totally understand the gameplay mechanic behind keeping this, you know, time sensitive, or not time sensitive, but like locked via time. That that makes sense as a gameplay. That actually is good game de game design, because what happens if you know when light side territory battles uh, territory battles just comes out, and then instantaneously everyone is getting max stars? Well, then we we have no point of playing because we're getting max stars. It's no longer fun. I mean, how many of you guys? have actually sat down and tried to do really, really well in the Sith raid, no one. Now, lower-end players, because a lot of my viewers are early to mid-game, so that's why I cover all this stuff, and that's why my initial reaction was so positive, because this is such a positive change for the early and mid-game, um, that smaller, smaller, and increasingly smaller minority of players, because so many of these end-game, long-term, five, six-year players are quitting because of these changes, that decreasing player pool is getting very upset because they need to be competitive. Because if they're in a 380 million GP guild and you get five for winning and one for losing, you're, you and you want to be competitive not only in GAC but now the arenas because now your executor will be slower, so you're not getting top placement in your fleet arena. Your Lord Vader or uh, Kenobi, you know, mirror matches are not. They're going to be worse off. You need to have this. So if the difference between being competitive and the only way to get free-to-play crystals is winning territory battles, you're going to be dang sure that everyone is going to be kind of grouping up into ultimate, like, all-star type teams, uh, type guilds. And what's that going to do to maybe not necessarily my guild, but, like, competitive guilds at the 280 million range? Let me know in the comment section where you guys and your guild falls and how you think this is going to uh, this is going to impact you because I have people who are in 20 million GP guilds. Like you're getting you're getting nothing. I got people who are in maxed out and and the end they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year type players. So everyone's falling all over the spectrum. So go in the comment section let me know where your guild falls, what you guys are foreseeing as the implications of all of this. I want to hear what that uh, what you guys have to say so I can, you know, maybe come back and express viewpoints that I hadn't quite considered before. But let's go back and say you're a 280 million GP guild, right? You do not qualify for Relic 9. But you guys are very competitive 280 million GP guild. And let's say that you're one of the bottom 10 players. You have built up relations, you are friends with these guys. It's fantastic. You are going to be kicked. Now, I hate to say it, and the guild problems are already awful. You are going to be kicked in your 1.5 million GP account. You are going to be replaced by a 6 million GP player, and that's going to happen to a bunch of people until they hit that 300 million GP because they want those dang Relic Nines. That's just what's going to have to happen. It sucks. I think it's stupid. That's what's going to have to happen. Now, again, I do not see the implementation of this as necessarily a bad thing because you want this to take a while to get R9s because you don't want to see R9s everywhere day one or it's going to suck. And yes, you're going to be able to buy packs and all of the end game players are going to be forced to spend $150 on those three packs to get R9 for their executor, for their Piet Relic 9, and maybe for their Lord Vader, depending on how, uh, how impactful R9 is on Lord Vader. But um, end game players are pissed. Early game players are having the time of their lives, unless they're in that middle area where they're in those guilds where they're going to have to be replaced by better players. If you are a guild leader or officer, I especially, especially, especially want to hear what you have to say because I feel like they're going to be the people who are impacted the most, especially if you're in the end game, because you're going to have to make tough decisions. Are you that 280 million GP guild officer 
who is swamped with your real life job. You got kids, you got a plan for TBs. And now TWs are going to be absolutely crazy with 50 GL zones and stuff like that. Um, people are pissed. I'm still holding on hope. I, I feel like it's a little selfish because a majority of my audience is going to be positively as opposed to negatively impacted by these changes. So I have a huge bias for the people who have supported me and who I support. But since I have friends who are in, you know, top five guilds, they're upset. They're upset. And I just wanted to let you guys know that that is an issue that's coming up. Overall, do I think this is a net positive or net negative? I believe this change is a net positive since a majority of the players are not going to be affected at that end, end, end game area. But I do really feel for those end game players who are absolutely getting shafted by this. And I'm not going to sit here and act like off the top of my head with no preparation. I have a better implementation. Um, so I'm not going to cast judgment on capital games or their, their development staff or this is how they chose to implement it. Because I haven't thought about this. I haven't ever needed to think about how R9 was going to be ruled out. Um, we had some speculation, but that was all BS. Um, so, you know, until they have an opportunity to collect our feedback and figure out, you know, maybe if there's a better way to do this, I'm not going to be throwing stones. You know, I'm not going to be ye who cast the first stone because, you know, I'm not sin free. So I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I love you. We hit 10,000 subscribers, so Halloween, Slave Leia, Cosplay, plus World's Hottest Chip. If you guys want an extra thing, I am up for consideration on an extra challenge to throw on top of those two for the Halloween live stream. If we can get 11111 subscribers, that's 11,111 subscribers by Halloween, that would be awesome. Uh, peace out, guys. Love you, and uh, stay positive.